Okay, hi, my name is Chris Landowski. I'm the co-founder and CTO for Onego Bio. Um, and I will talk today a little bit about the future of egg production and how our company Onego Bio will be shaping the future using precision fermentation. And I will focus a bit about our product and the technology behind how we make it. <clears throat> so egg is one of the wonders of our planet. It is a perfect bundle of nutrition in a very clever package. Um, egg protein is uh, really important, or egg white protein is the, one of the most important ingredients in the food industry, and the uh, market for it and the production of it daily is massive. Uh, I think 130,000 tons of egg white, or egg, is produced every year. Uh, every day, actually, every day. <laughs> and uh, $300 million worth per day is, is produced. So it's actually uh, through the great nutritional properties of the egg white and through the great functionality of the protein that this egg white uh, egg has been um, put into a quarterstone in I mean, many of the uh, cuisines of all of the world. So everybody's using it for, for all the things that we need. So it's quite unique protein. But replacing it, uh, as we wanted to replace a lot of the things in our diets to something more uh, sustainable, it's been very difficult because, um, I mean, egg is a very complete protein, so it has all the right nutrition that you need. It has the right functional properties. It foams, it gels. It's very versatile and all the different things just a single egg white can do. So if you try to replace it with, say, a plant protein, it doesn't always work. And so it can be done, but in the end, why not just make an alternative for egg, the, the real thing, just in a different way? So, of course, uh, the traditional way of producing egg whites is egg is through chickens and through laying eggs. And that way, the traditional way of doing this is very fragile and very inefficient. Fragile in that uh, there's, of course, a lot of bird diseases, bird flu, other kind of zoonosis that happens that can affect the... Uh, amount of chickens there are, and that's, uh, of course, one of the reasons it's fragile. And, of course, in the future, if there's more protein needed in the world, you can't just start growing more chickens. It wouldn't be a very sustainable option. So we have to also think about that. But the inefficiency comes in, a chicken can only produce one egg per day. You, know, you can't really make it go much faster, so it's also very not uh, very, very good at uh, converting when it eats food. It's converting that into protein, but it's somewhat inefficient in that. So we have to think about, uh, if you're thinking about the best way to produce protein, just thinking about more modern methods, from one hectare of land, you can actually be 10 times more productive using other technology. And we can also reach uh, similar price points uh, as the chicken versions using precision fermentation. Um, just going a little bit back on cellular agriculture, of course, there's maybe four pillars of alternative ways to produce food products and uh, food ingredients uh, from plant-based um, solutions, which you probably heard a lot about in the meetings. Of course, cultivated meat, a uh, really new topic that is being investigated, biomass fermentation and precision fermentation. These are all things that we'll need in the future to find sustainable food options. But we'll specifically focus on precision fermentation here. So fermentation is something quite ancient. It's a very ancient technology for being able to produce uh, beverages like beer or wine um, or uh, yogurt, bread, all all kinds of uh, products that we've been consuming as humans for thousands of years. And um, is maybe more recent times also fermentation is being, being used for making, uh, say, colorants from flavors, other things through uh, food processing enzymes like rennet, which are, are, are in a cheese manufacturing process. So these things are already familiar to us. We're just taking it a little bit to the next step of making full food ingredients with uh, fermentation and actually bioidentical agreements, uh, agree ingredients, so like egg or milk or cheese can be used, can be made with this technique. So the product that we're making is called bioalbumin. It's a bioidentical egg protein. I mean, it's basically the same exact thing, just produced in fermentation by a microbe. And that's very important, that is identical, because it has all the same properties as your egg white. 
Um, it's animal free, of course. There's uh, less worry about the safety of the animals and cruelty for animals. Um, and also since this is sort of a contained uh, system and that we don't have to worry about fluctuations, it's a fermentation system so that the supply would be constant and the price also of the product, if we were selling this now to a food manufacturer, they're more happy to, to get a price that is consistent over time instead of where you have, how many chickens do you have up and down, up and down. So this is a better thing. And as I will talk a little bit more about, there are ways to, to mitigate some of the environmental impacts. Of course, this is a bit of an easy product and that it is this well-known ingredient. It's being already used on mass scale. So there's already existing demand and clear use cases for it. And it is pretty much an instant match and one-to-one -one replacement for the current system. That's one big benefit. So our precision fermentation process, we're using a filamentous fungus called Trichoderma riceae. And we basically feed it uh, simple sugars and simple uh, in, uh, food sources and put it in a bioreactor and grow it for a week, for instance. And there's uh, two parts. We take the liquid part out, the liquid part that uh, we basically can uh, take the liquid, wash it, and dry it, and make the powder. And, uh, oops. Make the powder from that. And the powder is uh, our bioalbumin product, which can be used for baking and other, other uh, 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 food processing uh, needs. And then also the, this output, the mycelium itself, so the living part, we can also be used for packaging for leather. We've made sandals and, and uh, so maybe some pants someday. <laughs> but I mean, you can actually use it. So um, it's actually a useful material. So we'll get into the biocircularity bio of this in the, in the next couple slides, but it's a, quite a nice uh, system. But just taking a longer view, of course, there are many different uh, host systems, microbial systems that you might encounter, uh, bacteria, yeast, plants, and filamentous fungi. These are sort of the cornerstones of all of the production systems. Uh, some of them are used for different purposes. Uh, it's like some of the yeasts are used for biopharmaceuticals, plants you can make uh, different uh, flavors or whatnot from it, but filamentous fungi are, are used a little bit silently there in the enzyme industry to make different products. Um, that's something that we are focused on. But just taking a little bit of a scientific view of this, uh, what would make us decide to choose one of those different platforms for expression? I just want to highlight that. Uh, there are certain features of the strains, we call them fungal strain, the properties that it has. So it has to have uh, low proteus activity, uh, low cell background, and uh, say high capacity for producing the products we want and very high output, so you should be able to scale it up into huge vessels. And also there should be something that is safe for, for uh, food use, so that would have already have approvals from the US FDA grass, for instance. And there are kind of process-related things that we think about. Is it a secreted protein? Does it, as I said, into large volumes over 150 cubic meters would be ideal. Uh, has very simple media, and it's easy to process and to make uh, the food ingredient. So from this point of view, we had chose something called Trichoderma riceae. It's a filamentous fungus, as I, said, as I said, used in the enzyme industry already for many decades to produce really uh, enzymes that you wouldn't really think about every day. But for instance, in your washing powder, there are enzymes in there that clean your clothes. It's produced by this sort of organism. And um, these are organisms that can be grown in very large bioreactors, maybe up to 300 cubic meter bioreactor, which is quite massive uh, cultures, and can be done at uh, the right uh, price points because this has to be rather cheap and inexpensive before, in order to have impact in the field, it has to be affordable. You can't be, it can't be of, at a value that's a pharmaceutical price for this. It has to be a very cheap and inexpensive thing in order to have the impact that we would need. So well, many of these things are already been done in, in, in some way, so we're just leveraging that now for our products. And one of the important things about this was to understand some of the sustainability um, or, or the LCA analysis of this. So we have now 
looked at the production of our product uh, with trichoderma, and we have looked at the environmental impacts of this, and this was now published in Nature Food uh, somewhat recently. And here we have calculated that we use 94% less land. Of course, that makes sense. I mean, we're just having bioreactors and feeding it some, some sugar instead of having chickens running around everywhere and you need a lot of feed for those chickens. So less land, less carbon, em less, uh, carbon emissions, uh, CO2 emissions, and less water use. So these sort of um, support the idea that precision fermentation would be a better technology for producing food ingredients such as egg white. And as maybe mentioned, uh, this brings a circularity into it because the fun filamentous fungus that we use is a quite a clever uh, organism in that it can use a lot of varieties of food sources. For instance, we're using really simple sugars at the moment, let's say glucose or um, uh, dextrose from corn, but you could also, for instance, use um, uh, uh, starch from the food industry already. That is a, like a byproduct of uh, pea starch, for instance, that would also be used to feed our organism to make the egg. So there's that. And then I mentioned also we can reuse the biomass, the living part for making leather, for instance. So this makes a nice circular uh, value chain in a way, which is only possible in some cases. So we, with bioalbumin, we address many of those important features of, of this, does the performance uh, meet expectations, does the cost meet expectations, and what is the environmental impact of that? So all of these things uh, equal that, yes, our, our solution uh, addresses many of these factors. And here, just to leave you with a, one quote re that we recently found in Forbes, uh, I'll just read it to also and explain. So I've always been fascinated by the idea that you can take a technology that's quite advanced, mature, and cheap, and try to figure out ways to leverage it in a different application. This way, you can start from a very powerful platform to do something quite meaningful, quite fast. Doing that kind of work is hard in the academic setting because you just don't have access to these technologies. So from our point of view, this is, a, as I said, something that existed in enzyme production world, so trichoderma existed there in the enzyme industry for decades already, has a very known uh, infrastructure, known cost, uh, uh, cost structure, and has never been used for food production. So in our case, we're using this for food production, for making food egg white ingredient, our bioalbumin. And then we had access to this technology because we were a spin-off from a government research institute called VTT in Finland. So. We spun off from that and we got access to the technology and we had also the, the capability and knowledge to work with it. So this is meaning that we've only started one year ago from Onego and we're already, um, let's say even next year, already <laughs> gonna be manufacturing our egg white protein. So that'll be very fast. So in order to do that, you have to leverage something that's already known. So we're not needing to invent anything entirely new. But with that, that's my last slide, um, so thanks, and um, I'm willing to take any questions, I think. There is one question. What is the declaration of this agreement? Sorry, I couldn't hear. The level declaration. Ah, <laughs> yeah, there's, for instance, uh, we're working with many different possibilities. Uh, of course, there's a, a listing of that. We don't have a final thing since we didn't uh, kind of send this in for the, US FDA yet, but it could be animal-free egg white is one option, and there are potential like microbial egg white, there are many different ones. It really depends on the, we're working with some of our customers now to find really good uh, labeling options. But animal-free egg white is sort of okay, because now, for instance, there's a product on the market called, from Perfect Day, they also call it animal-free milk protein or whey protein, so there's already a kind of an existing naming out there. We still have one minute if there is one more question. Maybe I will give you a microphone. Uh, do you see also fermentation capacity as a bottleneck? Well, it's not... Uh, and, and why, if this yeah, is the case? Well, it's not necessarily a bottleneck in that we, you have to establish, so if we actually go to fermentation, to the manufacturing with a technology that's very efficient and very high output, 
let's say uh, this technology, fungal technology, we can maximize the use of the fermentation capacity that exists. But the existing capacity is not really enough, definitely not to, to uh, meet the needs for the future. I mean, we're talking, you know, egg industry to producing 10,000 tons of product for one product. So in order to do that is not by uh, existing co-manufacturing, so it would require that several new manufacturing plants are built. Uh, so it is sort of limited what is available, but of course you can always build more. So. So yes, yeah, so of course we can build new uh, factories for sure. It's just a matter of capital to, to do that. So to produce our products, so which will be needed in order to have the impact that you need. So this uh, requires some infrastructure and uh, it's needed, but uh, it can be done. Chris, thank you very much. Your topic and the presentation was really, uh, really uh, interesting, so I'm sure there will be much more questions.